Welcome back, everybody, to another fantastic episode of the Every Pokemon Episode Ever podcast. Or, if you follow us on social media, EPEEP for short. I am one of your hosts, Wrestling Chris G. And on the other line with me is my good old co-host. He's the one with the good cologne. It's good old Dougie Fresh. Dougie man, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm smelling even better. <laughs> so today's episode is episode 26 called Pokemon Sensation. Or translated from Japanese, Erika and Kusi... Kusaihana. Erika and Kusaihana. All right. That it's, sounds good enough. It sounds good enough, so I'm going to I'm going to run with it cuz I ain't no way I'm going to be able to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> so this is episode 26 on the um uh, Pokemon list, Doug. So how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um you know, we're we're knocking these episodes back. Um we've released a couple and we've had a couple of bangers in the last couple of weeks. Hell I'm yeah. sure people are just thrilled about. Um, yeah, today is no. We're recording this on November 27th, Black Friday in the USA. So I, I do have to say that because um, we do have followers in other countries. Yeah, and <clears throat> for the first time, I think ever, possibly, I, I might have to rethink that. Because we used to record on Saturdays. But this might be the first time we've been recording after just dropping a fresh episode. Oh, that might... Actually, yeah, you, you are right. Because I don't think we've ever recorded and dropped an episode that exact same day. I mean, obviously, it's not the same episode. You know, we, we haven't lost our, our, our nice back catalog, but... No, but people um, that that are just listening to it today, I mean, I know it's been a while for all of you Pokemon fans out there, but today is the first time, it, today's the drop of the very first band episode, Beauty and the Beach, our favorite episode, Doug. Mm. <laughs> and people are hearing that enthusiasm as we are recording this right now. <laughs> Well, it was. It was. I'll tell you what. It was probably a little worse, and I'm. I don't know if we ended. I think we ended up saying it at the end of the episode once we were sure it was going to be fine. That was the second time we recorded that episode. Yes. Well, and I'm sure the, the the recording that people heard was actually a mixture of both the first recording and the second recording. Because there was very minimal of that first one. All you were pretty yeah. much able to say with that first one was my on this date. But the whole rest of it was... Was recording number two. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to say this here, and I'll say it every time it comes up. I'm never doing that again, so if we lose an episode and it doesn't end up on the feed, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but we got some time until we get to that. Actually, we um from the time of this episode, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have literally two months and one week from the launch of this episode to our next band episode on The Legend of Dratini. So we're nine weeks away. Nine episodes away. Yeah, so um, and I and off the top of my head, and we don't have to go into it here, obviously, but on the off the top of my head, I don't remember why that one's banned. So that, oh. that'll be interesting. I do, um, because the um, the main the one of the main stars of that episode owns a gun. And oh, is that the that's the Safari Zone? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. And he's pointing the gun at good old Ash and the gang throughout the entire episode. Gotcha. Okay. Because he wants to make sure that Dratini is safe. Right. So, but that's not this week's episode. It's not this week, which is good because I haven't watched it. Yes. And um and I know we talked off air, we're not gonna drop all of our spoilers, but I I kinda feel like we're getting we're on the brink of what we're going to be doing for our Patreon pretty soon. Yeah, we're starting to get things in place. Um because yes. we've got we've we've got a pretty substantial um we've got a well, I mean we've talked about the movie. Yes. Um 
So the movie is going to be uh, Patreon exclusive. And then well, we... no, no, not the first one. Well, not the first one, but uh, the first main movie. Oh, right, right, right. The, yes. The first theatrical one, yeah. Yes, the first main mute movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back, um, is going to be Patreon exclusive, along with um, hopefully um, some extra features that me and you might be rolling out um, probably in about two or three months from now, um, once we kind of hammer down and we kind of get to talking behind the scenes, but that's kind of a sneak peek that there's more to come for the every Pokemon episode ever podcast. Yeah, we've got, um, we've got the kind of the bare frame. We're just kind of in the process of getting a few little details taken care of, but it's looking very promising. Yes. So Patreon is definitely going to be the place to be. I mean, yes, you, you're by by all means. If you like episodes every single week dropping on on a Saturday at eight a.m. Central Standard Time, uh, by all means, you can you can still um, the episodes will still be here. And um, I guess I can actually announce this uh, because this was breaking news as of yesterday um, for me and you. But uh, we've actually struck a deal with our spawn uh well with our provider to where um our episodes are actually not going to be dropping off anytime soon so we have at least a year up until november that all of our episodes are going to remain on the free feed um for the time being yeah because that was something we were kind of talking about and and we said well <clears throat> you know we could you know, to take those episodes as they were getting ready to drop off of the free feed and we could put them on Patreon and we could kind of advertise it as, hey, if you're late to the game, you know, now, unfortunately, you've got to cough up a couple of bucks. But now, now we can't do that, which is good uh, for the majority. In the majority, it's good. But in terms of being lazy podcasters, it was kind of a bad thing because I was kind of taking away an avenue. But we kind of think that we figured out something to kind of fill that to fill that void. That we, yeah. Oh yeah. So it, 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 it was a step back, but then at the same time, we believe we're going to be giving you a lot more in the coming months. And we will be made once me and Doug, uh, once me and you kind of hammer out, um, hammer out everything. And I'm guessing we'll probably like, be having conversations about this so i'm guessing within the next coming weeks uh we'll be able to make that announcement and we'll make sure to give everyone full warning as to when the announcement will be so you make sure you listen to that episode but yeah i'm guessing um coming soon um there's going to be more of a surprise just like you had to wait for the surprise for the movie um now you're going to be waiting on the surprise of what what else can we be giving you? That's right. We've teased it for long enough. We are officially starting uh, talking Digimon. Um, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we're not going down that route. <laughs> that uh, might have to be that might have to be like an April Fool episode or something. Just like a one off. <laughs> we're going to have to time it out perfectly. So we, have, we, we we're going to have to see what what episode is actually going to land on April Fool's Day. Yeah, if we get that lucky. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, um, as we as we stated before, this week's episode is Pokemon Sensation, and this episode dropped in Japan September 23rd of 1997. And here in the States, it dropped October 12th of 1998. So, um, again, we're still around that, uh, that almost year mark, um, uh, between, uh, Pokemon first coming out and it coming over here to the States and back in, and I, I know we don't really give it much credit, but back in the nineties coming from Japan and having something dubbed over, um, to, to come out here to the States and have these many episodes back to back to back to back to back, to back just dubbed. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. Because, I mean, you think about, uh, I mean, it's easy. I mean, like, I'm, I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball Z. So the way they do it now uh, is when they, whenever they have a new episode, it's, 
it's in Japanese, but then it comes over here and we're able to uh, watch the English version uh, maybe a couple weeks later. So it's, it's obviously gotten a lot easier with, with technology, but it's still amazing that back in the late 90s, because I, I, yeah, I guess it is the late 90s, that they were able to do all of this stuff. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, we don't even think about it now, but because I mean, it's pretty much instant access. I mean, I think, you know, you shared something with me a couple of weeks ago about an episode coming from the current season. Yes, Pokemon Journeys. And I think it's coming within maybe not this batch, but maybe the next batch that's hitting uh, Netflix. I think in the next week. Um, as we're as we're recording, not as this is being released. As this is being released, we might be on the fourth. Yes. So uh, at, the fourth phase. As as I said, we're recording this November twenty seventh. So one week from today, we're actually getting part three of the Netflix um, original series, and I I do have to say it like that because Netflix put it on every single episode at the beginning, saying this is a Netflix original. No, it's not. Which is still <laughs> bullshit because I, I I can point to I, again I can point to the case of Doom Patrol and Titans being quote unquote HBO Max originals when we all good and damn well know that it was DC Universe first. But yes. I think they that kind of got absorbed <laughs> in the shift for real. So. <clears throat> original i know (laughs) kind of 30 years late to the game netflix but uh fire the license doesn't mean you can stick a sticker on the back (laughs) well um according to if you were watching um the nba the last dance um in canada or um i i can't speak for any other country but uh uk i believe as well oh in uk um, it was on Netflix and they dropped the whole thing in one big swoop at the beginning of every single episode on there. It said Netflix original. Yeah, but, you know, us Americans, we watched it on ESPN. Yep. So. But um, outside of that, um, we, we're going to go ahead and go through um, our historical dates for October 12th. And then we'll get into the who's that Pokemon of this episode. So uh, for once, I'm actually going first this episode because my date was 1968 um, on October 12th. And this was actually the day that Hugh Jackman, um, Australian actor and singer. I didn't know he was a singer. but Oh, yeah, that was him singing on The Greatest Showman. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I I watched that movie. I thought it was, I thought that was all dubbed. I, I didn't think that was actually him. <laughs> so um but I know him best as Wolverine in X Men. Yeah, uh let's see. Wolverine, um I know that movie Real Steel because he was on WWE and he was promoting it. Um Oh yeah. You you remember when they used to have um, people promoting their movies and stuff on WWE, and we had a different actor every single week. Special. Oh guests. yeah, the the good old guest host era. Yes, just awesome. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, great, great. Uh, well, I won't say great because that kind of tr- a decent actor. Um, <laughs> you know, and he's weird because obviously he's in the X Men movies, right? Yes. But X Men is outside of the. MCU, so he doesn't really get a piece of that Avengers pie. I mean, he's you know he's like on the offshoot, like he's you know he's I've acted in Marvel movies, yeah, but you're not you know on the big fucking posters. Yeah, I know, which I think is kind of stupid because if Sony and if Sony and Marvel can finally put their differences aside and give um, rights to. Uh, to have Spider-Man in the Avengers movies. Fucking what's what what was what is so hard about having the X-Men? Cuz you know how cool it would have been to see fucking Cyclops fighting in the Infinity War. Oh yeah, I'm well and not, you know, don't just you know, single him out, but just having you know, uh Wolverine mess stuff up and Storm and Beast and would have been fucking you know, awesome. 
Gambit in these battle scenes just whipping playing cards and stuff. So, yeah, but that that was mine. Um, mine's kind of, a, as you called it off air, kind of a cheat <laughs> because of a birthday. But we, we did get a little bit of a backstory um, with it, so I'm I'm rolling with it. And spoiler alert, next week's is a birthday as well. See if See if any of you out there can find out who I'm talking about on next week's episode. Um, before, before I do mine, I, I did want to just take a quick second to ask you, cause we, we brought up X-Men and that made me think of, uh, something I wanted to ask you cause I wasn't sure if you've seen it. Have you seen the new mutants movie? I have not yet. No. Oh, okay. Never mind. I was yeah. going to ask you, this is worth my time cause I've been thinking about it and I, I didn't know if it was, so I might have to do a bit of digging on my own time. Well, uh, I'm glad you actually brought that up cause I could, I honestly, I forgot all about that movie. And now that you've reminded me, that's an extra movie that's going on my on my watch list because right now I'm on a, an Animaniacs kick and watching the new season of Animaniacs. So right, so that might be something I do here on the in the weekend here watching that because I was reminded of it uh, watching a YouTube video and then I thought maybe maybe you had seen it and could give me a quick opinion, but otherwise I could do a quick Google because I remember the trailer. I remember the trailer was really good. And it's supposed to be like horror and supernatural, and I'm into that, so we'll see. <laughs> Me and you kind of have the, the same taste in movies outside of maybe a handful. Right. So. So. Um, but yes, so my my historical occurrence was on October 12th, 1992. And for the first time... I think, legitimately, other than just bringing it up apropos of nothing else, mine's to do with wrestling. Oh, okay. Because, Let's go, bro. Like I said, on this day in 1992, Bret Hart would win his first WWF championship, defeating Ric Flair at a Superstars taping in Saskatchewan, Canada. Get out. And this right. is not only notable because it was Bret Hart's first uh, WWE, well, WWF, cha- we can say that now, I guess, WWF championship victory, but this was originally not televised. Oh, I this did not. Was, I, so he won his title off TV. He won it off TV. It was later, later released as a coliseum home video exclusive kind of like in a couple of like best of bret hart or whatever kind of thing uh later in the year uh possibly within a couple of months and it had a couple of matches and that was like the headliner on the tape and yeah it was like i say it was a match against rick flair um it's available on the network now obviously if you're or youtube or whatever if you're if you're wanting to seek it out um it was a, a really good um, kind of a back and forth. Um, Bret Hart, I believe, got this. Yes, he got the submission victory with, with his sharpshooter. Okay. And and that was the first of... How many times? Ah, that's what I'm looking up. I thought <laughs> I really thought Wikipedia was going to be quicker, and I'm disappointed. Um, for goodness sake, that should be on the top. Why is that not on the top? <laughs> why is that not on the top? I'm serious. Why is that? Why is that fifth down? Because who? Know, who? Because who the fuck cares about Bret Hart? Well, apparently not Wikipedia. The first of, <laughs> the first of five. WWF championships. Okay. Nice. So good so. stuff. All right. Well, that's good to know. Um, I'm I'm kind of perturbed right now, and I I think my fault. My cell phone is actually mocking me, and I don't really appreciate it. But you oh. want to know? You want to know what my phone just sent me? Um mocking you something to do with will smith no 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 oh, okay no, I'm gonna smack you <laughs> uh, um you keep saying that <laughs> if i keep saying it it'll come true um yes. 
So people know, people who know me personally know how I like to like mod stuff or if I can kind of swingle a good deal that I would. But my phone sent me something from Game Radar saying PS5 owners say they're receiving bans after selling PS4 user access. I to saw the, that. To the PS Plus collection. I saw that. I saw like I saw like a YouTube headline kind of thing and I'm like I was looking for something in particular and I didn't stop. I saw that. So what does that mean? I'm right before we get into this episode cuz I mean well, this episode is kind of straightforward, kind of kill a little bit of time real quick. Um I know a lot of our listeners play video games. What is that about? So if you if you and I can only say this because I recently activated my um, my membership that I got with my bundle. Okay. But if you're on PS Live or whatever it's called, you get, <clears throat> pardon me, you get access to, basically, you know how Xbox has Game Pass? Yes. This is, this is uh, Sony's Game Pass, basically. Oh, so, and, and so people are selling their their users so people can get access to these games for a limited time i'm right. guessing oh people are playing the field and <laughs> the fucking service is already cheap as hell why the fuck do you need to <laughs> i'm sorry that kind of i mean i i get the whole modding and doing different things like that but you're not even keeping this stuff forever like you don't own the rights to this stuff like i have both ps plus and i have game pass and i know damn well that the games aren't always going to be on there so you might as well play them while they're on there and then if you like the freaking game go out and buy it but, right it's wow. like blockbuster in your console really. wow if i'm not trying to date myself too much <laughs> So, um, speaking of Blockbuster, I saw a TikTok, um, I guess somewhere, um, some, somewhere outside of the States, there's still one Blockbuster out in the world. I, I, I would try to find that before the ending of this recording, but it's a, it's a nice tidbit that there is one Blockbuster out there that's still surviving in 2020 and it still has all the racks and stuff that we remember as a child. Yeah, because I believe, and it's a 50-50 shot on whether I'm going to get this right. The last U.S. blockbuster, I believe, was either in Alaska or it was in Oregon. And I believe that closed down maybe two years ago. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a quick search right now. I'm hoping Google is my friend. Um... Let's see. It's in Perth, Australia, and Alaska. And Alaska. So, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Check the date on that. Yeah, hold on. Um, April. I'm sure. I'm sure the Ala the Alaskan one is closed down by now. Every kind of. Uh. Blockbuster has just one store that remains open in the entire world, located in Bend, Oregon. There you okay. go. Okay, it was Oregon. See, yes, was, okay. you are you are correct, and it it's the last surviving blockbuster in the world. Well, damn. Yeah, I saw a TikTok, and you know, and these guys were like, "You will not believe what we just found um, out here in Oregon," as we were as they were visiting and they walked inside and they were like, this just opened up so much memories as uh, from, from their childhood. And it still had all the racks and like the videos and you look behind the videos like, wow. <laughs> I, I was shocked. That's like finding <laughs> out people still get the movie delivery from Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Is that still a thing? It was apparently it was the thing like, just three years ago. Holy shit. I'm going to look that up real quick. But we're getting ready to go into... Oh, <laughs> does Netflix still mail DVDs? 
Uh, if you pay a sep, uh, if you pay separately for a DVD subscription plan, Netflix has two DVD plans that you can still add to your account. Oh wow! Wow! I don't even think I have a DVD player. I've got a Blu-ray player. That that is nuts. That's crazy. I I'm gonna have to do a little bit more digging. I, I they can't be still selling DVDs. No. No. So, all right. So this episode is episode 26, Pokemon Sensation. And we're getting ready to go in. Are you ready to start this episode, bro? I am ready. All right. So we start this episode with <clears throat> with Ash and the gang. They are walking. And they are in a what appears to be a, a bigger city uh, compared to some of the other towns they've been to. Yes, and everywhere that they're going, the it the, uh, apparently these bit buildings seem like they're closing in on them, Ash says. And I was like, oh, okay, so they're not used to being in the big city. Yeah, this tripped me up because they had a very similar opening to the next to the next episode next week. Yes. So I had to like backtrack and make sure I didn't click on the wrong episode twice. <laughs> but, I'm like, what? The, you said that. <laughs> yes. So. This episode um, starts off with as soon as they walk into the city. So, so far, we don't know what city they're in. Right. So in this episode, they walk in and Brock and Pikachu sniff the air and then Ash and Misty sniff the air. And they're like, oh, oh, actually, no, it's not even Ash. A Ash doesn't even smell it because he, he's getting ready to go and look for a gym. But yeah, he's got that tunnel vision. Misty, Pikachu, and Brock are sniffing the air, and they're they're like looking around, and then Brock just dashes off, and Ash is looking at Brock like, "Hey, wait, wait, hold on, where where are you going?" And this is where we get reminded that Brock is in puberty, right? <laughs> Straight because when we find Brock after after we get a quick uh, title uh, title screen. His face is pressed right up against a window, and he looks inside, and he sees a pretty girl. A pretty girl. And, uh, well, 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 he well, does well, say well, pretty, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, but it, it, it's just funny because, well, it's not even just one. He sees three pretty women inside of a store, and Ash is looking around, and he's like, um... Brock, we, we, we have to go. And this is when we find out that they are indefinitely in Celadon City. Right. Um, home of the Cerulean Gym, or not Cerulean, um, the Celadon Gym, where Ash right. hopes to get his next gym badge. Right. So at this point, um, Brock goes, well, I think this this city is the perfect city. I, I'm I'm. I'm, I think I'm just going to stand right here and just watch for a while. And then he's like, all right, well, you can just stay here. Misty, let's let's go on go. Come on, Pikachu. And Ash looks around and he's like, where, where the fuck is Pikachu and Misty? And then he gets tapped on the shoulder by Brock. Right. And instances like this confuse me because... Pikachu is Ash's Pokemon, right? Yes. Right. And I understand that he's traveling with Brock and Misty. And I understand that Pikachu, for the most part, is a very friendly Pokemon. Yes. So, you know, he'll let Misty carry him around. You know, he'll put up with Brock. And, and I understand he went into the store with Misty because they both <laughs> got drawn in by the by the good smell. But if your trainer, hard-headed as he may be, says, all right, Pikachu, let's go, we're going. Yes. But Pikachu routinely, and this is another instance of it, just sits there. Just, no, I'm just pretty foul. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> this, is, this is what kind of bugged me a little well not well not really bugged me but this is this is when we get 
Ash is a dick 101. So I, I yeah. th- th- this 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 should be a segment. Like I I feel like in the future I'm going to put like a little um like chime for um Ash is a dick moment in our podcast. Just just going forward. Just but. like make up a number, like Ash is a dick number eight thousand six hundred and two. <laughs> so it's at this point. So we, um, Ash gets tapped on the shoulder, sees Misty and Pikachu inside of the building, of course, and Pikachu and Misty are inside, and they're they're smelling the perfume. The perfume smells amazing, and Misty is being a being. A, a regular girl who likes perfume and she's completely engulfed by the saleswomen that are inside. And then here comes Ash just barging in like a complete asshole asking <laughs> Misty, why the hell is she in a perfume store? It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. And like, who the fuck are you to go in into this place? I mean, we're going to get into why he gets into the predicament that he's in, but who the hell are you to go into someone else's business telling them that their business sucks? Yeah, that was kind of shitty. I mean, I understand not wanting to waste your time. I understand having a having a single track mind, and I understand you know there's a gym in this town. I want to find this gym. I want to get this badge, and I want to get moving because I'm probably still chasing Gary and the other folks from pallet town in front of the owner he said perfume stinks <laughs> well which is funny for a couple different reasons because it might stink but it usually is a good stink <laughs> um, but yeah i mean he was just a typical 10 year old boy you know essentially minus being dragged into jc Penney's by his mom you know i guess i mean so i i think something i think ash being an only child and basically being raised by his mother. Um, hey, I'm sure Ash has been um, dragged into a few different stores that he probably didn't want to be in. One of which being Perfume. Another one of which probably an underwear lingerie store. And he probably just was like, "I hey, I'm, I'm out on my own adventure. Why the hell am I going to be caught inside of one of these stores on my adventure? This is my adventure. Yeah. When there's probably a pokemon gym you know right down the block yeah and i'm I'm just gonna throw this out out there doug misty doesn't need to be with ash when he goes to get his badge right all he needs to do is go in and say pikachu we have a gym battle let's go and pikachu can come back to the damn store at a later time he but he doesn't have to be a damn dick right but <laughs> see ash will never admit it but he likes the moral support. Yeah, he does. As much as he might bicker with Misty and he might not completely understand Brock's motivation, he likes the moral support. So in in his mind, it's all for Ash. But in the back of his mind, there's kind of a one for all, all for one kind of mentality that he won't let dominate things because that'll bring up all different types of feelings that he's not ready to confront. Yes. So it's at this point, uh, <clears throat> Ash Ash says the wrong thing, and as we were stating, um, calls calls the perfume stinky. It says it smells and it's nasty, and we get a nice little girl or nice little woman's voice in the background that goes, "I resent that statement," and we get like a little nice little animation of gloom with vines in each corner. Um, panning up to a pretty girl's face, who we fi- end up finding out is Erica, right? Right. Yeah, yes. That, that that is her. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking of uh, of a few weeks ago when we were doing the last gym. I was about to call her Sabrina, but no, that's not Sabrina. That's Erica. Right. Young right now. Man, are you- so, do you want to you want to go over this next part, Doug? After after Ash gets called out for calling the perfume stinky. Oh, you mean when he literally gets thrown out? <laughs> yes. Like, literally gets thrown out on his face. And, I mean, and, I mean, he literally, well, he, he doesn't get thrown out. He does get kicked out, doesn't he? Yes. So, 
uh, but the the lady or Erica says she's like, you really think that this stuff is stinky? And Ash doesn't back down. He says, who would pay for this stuff? Which is a fair thought <laughs> if you were aggravated. Yes. <laughs> An aggravated 10-year-old. And if, and if you didn't realize you were severely outnumbered in that scenario. Yeah. Him, him and Pikachu are the only boys along with Erica, her three, um, her three the three other women themselves women and misty so he's completely outnumbered yeah so th th this just starts going downhill right away and then freaking horny ass brock comes into the picture yeah and he was he was kind of playing the role of you know this traditional you know kind of like i'm a feminist i'm on your side kind of thing which <laughs> you know probably hit a little harder today than it would have you know back in you know whatever what it was at 98 99 um it's like well proxy's trying to get laid and you know respect to that um <laughs> ash called brock a zombie he said perfume turns men into zombies look at this and just pulls brock into the picture <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh so he i mean it, it, it's funny to see young ash and what what he might end up enduring like as an adult like i don't think me and you at any point by the time we're off of this earth are ever going to see ash as an adult i think he's still going to be 10 years old later on when we're like when when pokemon's over and like the phenomenon is over and the show's over and we're still reviewing this stuff i don't think we're ever getting an adult ash no i mean i think he's stuck in um, you know, cartoon land where you don't age unless it's, you know, relevant to the plot. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, and I might be wrong, but I think Ash actually does end up aging a little bit or at least becomes a teenager in the more later series. Right, but it's not drastic. You yeah. know, I mean, you can you can give him a few years here and there, but, you know, you can't, like, he can't be going out after a big gym battle and getting smashed yes so uh, so yeah he literally gets kicked out and then you know he storms away in a huff and then we do like an immediate smash cut to this gym yeah he says i'm going to the celadon city gym i don't need your perfume it just storms away boom now we're at the and gym. we're at the gym and we're we're basically right in the door and Ash is still Arguing. severely outnumbered by women. Because the first line that he says when he gets in, well, that we see when he's inside of the gym is, what do you mean I can't battle? And Erica basically says, I don't, um, if I don't battle people who don't respect perfume, which I think is, okay. Yeah, I, no, I, that's bullshit. I, yeah, and I thought that was complete bullshit. Because no matter what, you, you cannot, I mean, a, as a gym, I think she was taking her power way too serious yes. when this was happening. Because uh, no matter, that, that that's Ash's opinion. I mean, he might not be right, but it's Ash's opinion. And just because he doesn't view everything the way that you do, you as a gym leader, if you are being challenged, and someone came to your town to get a badge so they can go and fight in the Pokemon League, you're going to tell him, no, you're not going to battle him. And no, I mean, I mean, to us, we, we end up finding out later on that there's more than eight gyms and there's more than eight cities. But you're telling him if there was only these eight cities and you have to beat all eight of these gym leaders, that you're going to stop a trainer from being able to go to the Pokemon League because he doesn't fucking like perfume. Yeah, I mean, she's governed by the the official, you know, guidelines of the Pokemon League. You know, I would imagine, you know, and obviously it, it doesn't get to that point, but I would imagine if there was an issue, Ash could just make a couple of phone calls and say, look, I, I was unfairly, 
uh, denied entry into this gym, and therefore, you know, I only have seven badges, and I can't progress in my journey because some broad. <laughs> I don't think we could say that, Doug. <laughs> well, I said it. You know. I could have said a lot worse. Yeah, true. So, you, you could have called her a different word, but yeah, a couple different words. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, because some, because some leader. I mean, I you know, I don't even need to bring her because it doesn't matter. You know, it. You know, if Surge would have said, "No, your Pikachu's too puny. I'm not going to battle you." You know, I mean, this is ridiculous. You know, it's not. She and she assaulted Ash. Not only did she kick him out of the store by kicking him on his ass, but she takes a damn X stamp, a big red stamp, and fucking just goes bam. <laughs> fucking assault him. Like what the fucking? Obviously, Ash being. Um, only a 10 year old boy doesn't fucking know what he what 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 to do and and when he gets locked out erica gives him the old um eye pull with the tongue sticking out and ash is about to fucking cry and as that's going on we see team rocket sneaking in the background with a ladder yes and they, they're they breaking into the gym so they can get the secret formula to her perfume so they can use it to make all the money in the world. And Meowth is hungry. Yes. <laughs> so they, when they're, when they finally break inside, um, they run across a sleeping gloom. Which, which, and you didn't do it, so I'm going to do it, which has to be the, who's that Pokemon? <laughs> Yes, I, I completely forgot to do the Who's That Pokemon. Yes, Gloom is your Who's That Pokemon of this episode. Right. All right. So, uh, so yes, so Gloom is just sitting there sleeping, and I, I fucking fully blame, like, Team Rocket actually could have had a decent plan in here, but... And Gloom was just sitting there, just or not just not sitting, but just standing there, just asleep. Like they didn't even have to aggravate this Gloom. No, absolutely not. But they're they're villains in a kids' cartoon. It can never go. <laughs> it can never go that smoothly. You know that. Yeah, but they they push their luck and they start talking to the damn Gloom and shaking their hand in front of Gloom's face to see if Gloom is sleeping and. Freaking Meowth has a fucking big ass mouth. Like if I'm Gloom, I'm like, who the hell is disturbing my damn sleep? Yeah, who comes into my fucking greenhouse? <laughs> so Gloom wakes up and then just um du puts his well first uh, when Gloom wakes up, James is like, oh no, uh, Gloom stinks. So I'm gonna go and send my coughing out and fucking put a, put my toxins all over Gloom so it suffocates Gloom. And Gloom just says, nah, I'm just going to breathe these in, thanks. <laughs> that was hilarious. Gloom is like, <gasps> and just sucked in all of Coffin's fumes and then does its own stun spore and fucking, like, kills damn Coffin. How, how the fuck does Coffin get uh, polluted, but Coffin's fumes doesn't pollute Gloom? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, Gloom is a plant, so it would take in the... It would take in the atmosphere. Gotcha. I mean, if I'm if I'm trying to find the logic thread. Ew. <laughs> oh, yeah. bless it. I'm allergic. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, coughing drops like a stone out of the sky, and um, Team, Team Rocket, Rocket gets paralyzed. They start to panic, and then we get a, a nice little wink at the camera from Meowth. Because he's holding his nose, you know. Oh, this is the worst smell in the world. This is horrible. And Jesse's like, "You don't even have a nose." <laughs> and then Meowth goes, "Oh yeah, the the cartoonist never drew one for me." <laughs> <laughs> so we we get a, a yeah, like you said, a nice little wink at the fourth wall. They broke the fourth wall, and they freaking know that they're cartoons, and they they do this in the next episode too. But we'll get to that next week. But they they they're we're now at the at the term of. Pokemon where 
uh, they know they're fucking cartoons. And to me, you know, that happened too quick. It's like you're 26 episodes in, you can't, you can't be poking holes into the fact that you're a show, but, you know. <laughs> um, so then they get attacked. By the three sisters. By, by yeah. Uh, are they sisters? Uh, no. Well, the three, the three They're, saleswomen. Just, yeah. And they get, they get tied up in a tree, and and they get assaulted with the big X. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. They get assaulted with the big X, and then they get tied, and then they wake up and they're tied up in a tree, and they start to bicker with each other. Um, and then they see Ash, and then Ash comes up, and, and this is what I loved about the episode. Like Ash is so defeated. That this next scene, he has to actually go to his damn enemies just to be able to go and and battle for this gym badge. Well, what's the uh, what's that saying? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So it's like you know, since we all hate the freaking gym right now, you know, let's let's all pull together and try to get one over on these broads. Yes. So and so we get a <laughs> we unfortunately. We then start to dive into some uh, troubling aspects of of this episode because <laughs> why why is it troubling, Doug? Well, it's just a weird episode from here on out. Um, <laughs> you, I love how you like skated over it before we got into it. You're like, "Well, this episode's pretty straightforward," and I'm sitting there going, "Is it?" <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. So, Ash and Team Rocket agree that um, that they'll work together um, to get inside of the gym. So Ash basically um, out of, out of, I don't even out of, out, dis, out of disdain for the gym. Yes. Teams up and he, he says that he will help team rocket get into the gym. If um, team rocket helps him get into the gym. And Jesse's like, I have the perfect get up for you to get into this gym. So what do they do? They have Ash cross dress as a woman. <laughs> put, him right, put him right in a yellow dress and a yellow wig. <laughs> He's a pretty little woman. <laughs> and, he, and, he, and, he, and he pitches up his voice. Like and, this. And, well, not quite like that. Um, <laughs> it's like fucking Mickey Mouse on helium. <laughs> um, and and they, 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 call, they call him Ashley and... You know, and then we see the three of them show up at the gym. Um, James is dressed like a middle-aged father. Um, and and Jesse has a real uh, school teacher vibe going on. Yeah, she's like in a kimono. Yeah, she like and she's got like the, the stereotypical librarian glasses and her hair's in a bun. Um and Meow, for whatever reason, has to make up James's uh, uh, dad gut. Um, <laughs> Just a perfect get up because they had nothing for Meow. They're like, they're like Meow, you cannot. Because if Meow is out there, everyone's gonna be like, "You're Team Rocket." <laughs> You're the it's the only talking Meow I've ever seen. <laughs> so. They they go into the store or back into the gym, and I think it, I think I still think this is bullshit because they walk into the gym and they're like, uh, "Oh, you want to battle for the gym badge? Well, do you like perfume?" Like, well, yeah, no, it's still bullshit. I mean, you can't, you know, you can literally put Ash in a dress, but that doesn't change the fact that the man doesn't like perfume. But you know, I mean, it, that sets a bad example to the kids watching. Yes. Sometimes to get things, you have to sacrifice your principles. And then, of course, that turns around. Well, what's a principle? Well, that's the head guy at your school. Never mind. Shut up. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I should say the head person at your school. Well, I, can't I, I was, I, I was about to make a really, really bad joke about principles, but I'm going to keep to myself. <laughs> I can't do it. No, well, well, the, we'll, 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 a lot of our listeners will run away if I make that joke. So I'm going to keep that to myself. Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> I'll tell you all fair. <laughs> so, at, um, Ash, what, what did Ash say that his name or his name was? 
Oh, gosh. I don't have the sound up. Um, well, because he says Ash originally. And then he has to kind of... <laughs> Ashley! Yes. So... No, well, Jesse calls him Ashley. Yes, Ashley. So... He he's cross he's cross dressing as a little girl named Ashley, and Ash gets this grin across his face after he's registered. He's like, after I get this gym badge, I'm basically I'm gonna show them, and that that's that that's not the mentality to have, Ash, because that that that's when karma comes and bites you in the ass. Or bitch, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> so it's at this point. Um, Team Rocket, who was playing Ash's parents, um, kind of leave them. They say, "Okay, well, have fun, Ashley." Uh, and Team Rocket's going to do what Team Rocket does, and which is cause trouble. And Ash- mainly for themselves, because we find out that as they're running away or towards something, we find out that Meowth has a goddamn bomb inside yes. James's jacket. You know, just. Just, just. I mean, why, why couldn't the bomb be the the daddy gut? Because that <laughs> that that bomb was fucking huge. Because <laughs> with because with James's luck, he'd trip. <laughs> boom. <laughs> Which um, well, I I I did the boom too early, but um, we it's at this point where we get the who's that Pokemon, which I stated was Gloom for this episode. Right. And when we come back. This gym is all uh, is all sorts of different things. It's it's a shop. It's a Pokemon workout center, which is what we find out um, coming back because the the trainers are actually exercising with the Pokemon inside of the gym, which is kind of cute. And not only um, are they are they doing that, but the you have another um, lady in there, and she's bathing the gloom. So she's bathing and then she's feeding the gloom. And then we go into story mode at this. Yes, we yes, we go into story time and Ash walks in and it looks like a meeting of some Girl Scout troop. And everybody has to stop because somebody new comes in. (laughs) This and Ash immediately and Ash immediately recognizes the girl that kicked him out of the store. And (laughs) And then he 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 sees um uh Misty and Brock and Pikachu. I I don't like that another random girl is just holding P- Pikachu. I was like, just about to say I have it paused, and <laughs> like Pikachu will just. I mean he is he's mega friendly when he wants to be. <laughs> P- Pikachu is just being held by one of the other women of the of the gym. Brock's over there crying because they just listened to a story about an Omnistar and. Misty's just smitten. She's just sitting there. Um, I'm surprised that she is okay with a lot of these Pokemon because she's not a real big grass Pokemon type of trainer. No, no, no. See, see, Misty is selective. Grass <laughs> is fine. Weeping Bells and Bell Sprouts are fine. But you get a goddamn Caterpie or a Weed, old boy, she'd be up a tree. For real. So, um, it's at this time that Ashley walks into the room and once he sees Misty, Brock and Pikachu, he's like, fuck. He's like, I'm, I'm caught. (laughs) Um, (laughs) so he, he's trying his damnedest to stay away from Misty, Brock and Pikachu and Pikachu just has no fucking chill at all. Just walks over to him. But wait a minute now. Before that, and I, I, I should really mark this because I don't get to do this a lot. We, I, I got to back you up a, a, a step. Oh, okay. Because we kind of get um, Erica's backstory. Yes. Um, as far as what has made her and Gloom so close. Oh, yeah, because Misty asked why. Um, I thought that uh, being around a Gloom is very toxic. So how can I be in the same room as a gloom without be going becoming paralyzed? Right, and we kind of get the the story that gloom is only dangerous to perceived predators, and we get the story of Erica being cornered by um, uh, Grimer, yes. and 
gloom coming to her rescue, or I should say that specific gloom coming to her rescue. And, you know, and they've been together ever since. And coming out of that memory, uh, Brock has the tissue again. I would have enjoyed that story even more if it wasn't a gloom that came to her rescue, but it was an oddish because she was a child in that story, which means that gloom has been gloom and has not evolved into a bioplume in like almost 20 years. Well, I mean, then we start talking about how come, well, well, I mean, we know we've had that episode. I was going to say, how come Pikachu hasn't evolved, but we just had that episode a while back. Yes. Um, But yeah, it's at at that point that um, Ash starts really kind of panicking um, because Pikachu comes over and, you know, recognizes Ash, like, you know, he's not stupid. (laughs) And, And Pikachu can smell Ash. (laughs) <laughs> right. And Ash is kind of like, you know, buzz off. You know, I'm trying to do something here. And then Pikachu gets pissed and shocks him. You know, because <laughs> why wouldn't you? Fry, fries his little Goldilocks off of his head. <laughs> and then fucking Misty has to sit there and be shocked. And I'm sitting there going, God damn it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Could you not see his face? Like, you or, travel with him all the time. All he has is a wig on. Or what about the goddamn green backpack on his shoulder? You know. Oh, that's fucking true. I forgot he has the backpack still. Well, and once again, I only noticed that because I have it uh, freeze frame. Um, and then Ash is like, "Well, I, I'm here. I might as well challenge you to a battle again." And, and and then at this point, Erica, since she's in front of everybody now, goes, "It's my duty as a gym leader." What, what the? Where the fuck were where you? The fuck was that five minutes ago? This episode could be fifteen <laughs> minutes long. <laughs> It's my duty as a gym leader um, to to take on all um, challengers to this gym. That's horseshit. Yes. <laughs> I'm running that up to the damn Pokemon <laughs> Council. This is horseshit. I'm used to getting given badges, not having to actually fight for it. And we're going to get a line in just a bit in this episode. Oh, actually, no, that's in the next episode. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. So, uh, well, well <laughs> Doug, they, they have to fill 30 minutes. Well, that, that's in the net. You just killed the biggest joke of the next episode. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's still funny. But, but it, funny. It, it it bears relevance. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, right before we start the battle, we get a really quick scene of Team Rocket finding what they believe to be the secret formula to yeah. the to the Perfume Empire. Yes. Which and why that, well and we're gonna get into what's actually in that bottle, but why the fuck would you put that into a bottle like that for to trick intruders? Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, it worked. It worked. <laughs> um, so then we get the battle, and uh, Erica comes out with Tangela, and um. You know, Ash has to pull out Dexter because he's never seen a Tangela before. And, and then Ash goes, you know what? I'm going to fight your grass Pokemon with my grass Pokemon, which is idiot. I mean, you, you have is, a Charmander, but right. Um, but yeah, let's let's make things harder on, on 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 yourself, Ash, and send out Bulbasaur to the battle. And he throws him out and Bulbasaur uses, <coughs> pardon me, Vine Whip. Yes. And Tangela uses Stun Spore? Uh, let's find out real... Yes, Stun Spore. And Bulbasaur is kind of stuck. And Ash basically concedes the point and calls Bulbasaur back. Well, not only that, but Tangela um, tangled up Bulbasaur in, in his own Vine Whip. Right. So... So he was he Bulbasaur was tangled um in the Tangela along with getting hit with stun spore and that I, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of impressed that they put two and two together to have have that happen to Bulbasaur. Because what happens to a Bulbasaur whose vines get tangled up? Like, do you do you then have to go over to that Bulbasaur? Does the Bulbasaur stay inside of the Pokeball with tangled up? vines until you get them to a pokemon center or how does that work well 
because that that I would be a, I would be very irritated to be inside of a Pokeball with tangled vines. <laughs> well, but. and we also get the look inside a Pokeball at the very end of the next episode. So, and it's not that vast of a space. No, not at all. Um. So Bulbasaur is called back, and then I should pause this because this episode was basically over for me. Uh, <laughs> so and then so then uh he he does kind of wise up and he calls out charmander um, charmander and and then she calls back her tangle and sends out a weeping bell yeah and why why do you why did she concede her point with tangle why wouldn't you just ride the hot hand well <laughs> i'm 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 going to put two and two together and I think that if fire accidentally hits one bind of a Tangela, that oh. the, the whole thing is just going to go up. <laughs> oh. And I don't think that's good for either Pokemon. No, that's not good for anybody. <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't want to be talking death again on Pokemon this, this soon. <laughs> oh. So uh, Erica calls out a Weeping Bell, which is the second evolutionary form of a Bell Sprout. Yes. And uh, Weeping Bell uses Razor Leaf. And gets and... all of the fucking um, leaves burned to a crisp by Charmander. Yes, because Ash picks something up. So it's, it's, it's literally raining fire leaves. So Erica then has to turn around and call Weeping Bell back for fear of, you know, burning. Well, no, it, it, the, the burning leaves did burn. It, it knocked out Weeping Bell. Oh well, no, that didn't do it. The headbutt. Oh, the headbutt did. Yes, the headbutt did. So then, um, Erica has to go to her ace in the hole, which was uh, Gloom, who then releases um, Stun Spore. Her her stun or it stuns for again, and Charmander is completely paralyzed, gassed out. Um. And and Erica just laughs at him like, "What a bitch!" I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no, I I'm kind of with um, Erica in this instance. It's like, oh, so you think you're literally hot shit because you're sitting there with a Charmander? I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a thing or two or twelve. And you know, and you know, poor Charmander hasn't had the best run of things. I mean, you know, we we've, we've kind of established that. So then Ash is kind of thinking like, who, oh, who should I call out? And he has this thought where, well, I do have primate, and he remembers getting punched in the eye, and he doesn't want to go through that again. So he's which, like, well, which I think is complete bullshit. He, he, he out he's of caught all, him. he caught, caught him, he caught now. primate, and not only has he caught primate, but he is refusing to let primate out of its pokeball because we had this like an episode ago where he thought about using primate, but he remembers he got punched, so he doesn't want primate to be out there anymore. How the hell are you going to train him? Like, how the hell is Primate eating? Right. Like, if you're scared to let him out of out of its Pokeball. Right. So I'm sorry. Like, that that that's just a dick thing. No, I mean it's a valid thought. So he's kind of he's kind of got he's kind of thinking, and he's like, "Well, what do I do?" And then Pikachu uh, steps up. Pikachu decides it wants to fight this week, and then, <laughs> you know, for once in a gym battle. Ash is like, well, hot damn, Pikachu actually wants to fight. And, you know, so we're about to have this big showdown between Gloom and Pikachu, and then uh, Team Rocket pokes back in again. Yeah, th and this is where the episode takes a turn for the worst. Yes, because um, uh, a bigger bomb makes an appearance. And Meow um, freaking launches it. He launches it, and <laughs> Team Rocket immediately gets their comeuppance, obviously because they're dumb, and and they get they they blast away with what they still assume to be the secret formula. So they're okay with blasting off because they're like, oh well, we got the secret formula, so bye. But in the meantime, the grass type gym has literally gone up in flames, and the trainers are are scrambling around trying to call all these Pokemon into Pokeballs, and Pikachu is over there with a goddamn watering can with a taking care of <laughs> one so little cute. flower. 
That was, was like, so That's cute. cute. But there's shit going on. And he can barely hold the water can. Like, he's pulling it. So, you know, and then we, we go to the outside of the gym, and Ash is kind of... He's kind of frozen in this weird mix of anger and fear. And Misty's kind of snaps him out of it. He's like, you idiot, you have a water Pokemon. Help out. Help, you know. So he calls out Squirtle. Misty calls out Star You and Star Me. And they're using water guns. And um, they finally Brock put has, the gym down. And Brock has Geodude. Oh, wait, no, uh, they don't. Not yet. No, because Brock has Geodude spreading dirt. And then we cut to Erica, who's running around in a panic. Because she <clears throat> lost her gloom. Right. And then, you know, goddamn Ash feels like he has to redeem himself. So he goes, you know, fucking freaking McLean and goddamn Diar just goes freaking running into this burning building. You know, searching for gloom, finds it, and so I'm. I'll help you, and then you know, gloom is, you know, fairly petrified, so it lets out the gas again. And Ash thinks that he's about to be paralyzed again, and but gloom sits there, and since and what we learned, what we didn't say in the beginning was, if gloom likes you. And it sets out its stun spore. Its stun spore will not hurt you. No, it's a sweet scent. Yes. And, you know, we kind of have a, a a heartwarming moment, you know, where Ash realizes that he's got the trust of this Pokemon, despite the fact that he's basically spent the entirety of the episode dragging perfumes and flowers and smelly stuff. Um and he's got gloom in his arms, and he comes running out, and he's greeted like a hero, and which you know, fair play because he did save the trainer's favorite Pokemon. Yes. Um, and because <laughs> once again, because and I hate to say it like this, but it's what happened because Ash was in the right place at the right time and did the right thing. He gets, he gets the a jump. <laughs> yes, but I want I want to point this out. So. How is Ash's mother not fucking flipping shit? Because it seems like everywhere that Ash goes, something's blowing up or there's big trouble. And I'm sure there's a lot there's a lot of news behind a lot of stuff that that's going on here. Oh, like we'll the, get to her in the next episode. Don't worry about that. Well, well, Mist, Misty's gym gets destroyed. We had a fucking uh, Pokemon Center get destroyed. And now... Um, this gym is freaking destroyed, and it's all within Ash's timeline. Like, it's just following him. Yes, but this is before Google alerts, so maybe she's just <laughs> blissfully ignorant. I wonder if Ash was there. I wonder if he's okay. <laughs> oh, what you don't know. So he, so, yeah. he gets the badge, and then they the were rainbow like, well, badge. Right. And then they're like, well, what about the stuff that Team Rocket stole? Oh, America's... that's not the secret formula. That's a special ingredient that we use inside of our perfume. And and they're in some, like, industrial tube or something. Yeah, and they... at a construction site. Right, and they open this bottle, and it's just it just whops them. And it's just, ah, and it's fucking, you see the the uh, pipe they're in just fall off and they're jumping around in it and shit. (laughs) And they're paralyzed now. So now they have to just wait for the effects to wear off. And and then we get, we go back to Ash and he's parading through the town with his new rainbow badge. And we hit, we get a happy ending to a yet another Pokemon episode. So Ash now has five badges. Yes. Three more to go. Well, as far as we know. Yes. <laughs> well, he says he needs eight badges to get into the Pokemon League. Well, but... I guess that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. Another week, another episode, Doug. This was a good episode. I like gym, gym battle episodes. Yeah, no. I mean, gym battle episodes are good. Um, you know, we did actually get a little bit of a gym battle before Team Rocket had to stick their nose in things. Um. 
you know, we get another instance of Ash being a hero, which is fine. Um, you know, Ash kind of learned a lesson, kind of got straightened out a little bit. Um, I still think in the grand scheme, he's right. You know, fucking perfume is a racket. <laughs> um, you know, so. you spend, you can spend hundreds of, the, hundreds of dollars on that shit. It's fucking, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> Tell, d- tell them how you really feel, Doug. Well, no, I can't do that. Well, um, I, I can't speak on it because I, I, I like cologne, so. I, I do, too, but, like, I don't, you know, I don't sit there and, you know, ask for it for Christmas or, you know, seek it out at a store. I mean, I'll get it as gifts, you know, every now and then, but I won't. I'm not. Like, if somebody says, hey, here's a bottle of cologne, I'm not going to sit there and, you know, smash it in front of them. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, you're you're, not you're, you'll do it behind their back. Well, no, because that's a fucking mess. Um, <laughs> well, you don't do it on your property. Well, you don't do it at all. Cause it's, at the end of the day, it's a glass bottle. <laughs> if if it's if it's worth it, salt it is. Um, but yeah, it's not at the top of my Christmas list. How about that? Gotcha. So, yeah, I'm. I think. I'm done for this week. Um, did you, did you have anything else to add for this week? Doug? No, I mean, this was a good episode. Um, you know, like you said, gym battles are always fun. Uh, there's some good comedy. Uh, you know, we got a little wink at the audience. Um, you know, Brock was horny. Um, <laughs> good episode all the way around. So, all right. And then next week is, uh, uh, it's a it's a nice little one off episode um called Hypno's Nap Time. Yes, and that's another um interesting episode. Yes. So I, I kinda feel like next week's up ep- and um I hope it's not too big of a spoiler, but I, I think next week's episode um uh, <clears throat> so I mm, I'm gonna i I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say next week's episode is gonna be a shorter episode. I would say so. I mean, because, you know, you said straightforward for this one and it kind of went off on a few different tangents. Next week's episode is pretty one track. Yes. So, yeah, I would I would I mean, don't get don't get the idea that it's going to like lack in quality, but I don't think there's going to be as many chances for tangents. No. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we'll get into it next week, but. Yeah, I think I think I think you're right. So, um, but yeah, so what is next week's episode? Hypno's nap time. What is that translated to? Sleeper the Pokemon hypnotism. I like the first one. <laughs> <laughs> that translation is clunky. It's very clunky. So, <laughs> So yeah, that that's next week's episode. So it's gonna be a. I, I think it's. I, I think it's a fun episode, and I think we're gonna poke fun at it quite a bit next week, uh, just because uh, of poke fun. Poke yeah. fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't have anything else to add. Do you have anything else to add, Doug? No, I really don't. So, all right. Well, in that case, um. Say goodbye, Doug. Bye, Doug. And this is Wrestling Chris G telling all of you you do not want to miss next week's episode, and it definitely won't put you to sleep. Have a good night.